Hey y'all, welcome back to Moon Acres. Today, it's rainy out, it's kind of nasty, I had my butt kicked at physical therapy, and so I'm kind of taking it easy, hanging out in the shed today. But it's also my birthday this week, and I went ahead and splurged big time on some really nice rods and reels. I got uh, some Lou's um, TLC 2000s, which are going to be great for bass fishing. I've really gotten into bass fishing around here in my little kayak. And then I coupled it up with St. Croix uh, Triumphs, which are medium fast action uh, rods, six and a half foot. And it's going to be just killer diller when I get out there and start slaying the bass with these things. Uh, for years, I've been using ugly sticks with uh, just some really old Shimano's that I've had or were handed down to me. Uh, so it was definitely time for an upgrade. I don't have a boat, so I don't have a boat payment. And also, I don't have the luxury of all the stuff that comes with the boat. So I figured I'd go ahead and spend the money and make an investment on some good rods and reels to uh, make my experience out on the kayak a little bit more enjoyable. I also got a set of wheels that go, uh, you can strap the kayak to, to help get from your truck down to the water a lot easier. And so that should be a little bit more enjoyable. So I'm not throwing out my hip, just trying to go fishing. Um, Cause that, that's really no fun. So for today, what we're doing is we're going to take just some monofilament line and we're going to put that onto the spool first and basically use that as a filler just to get a little bit uh a, a few more extra feet out of our spider wire that we got this is only uh, 300 feet i've got two reels to fill up so divide that in half i'm only getting 160 feet when or excuse me 150 feet when the reel is capable of holding uh, up to 160 feet so i'm going to get my extra 10 feet in with that mono filament um, and just like mashed potatoes and dinner it's just going to act as a as a stuffing but um so what we do first is we're going to set this up you can use a screwdriver to do this um, for me i didn't have a screwdriver that was the right length but basically, we need something that can wedge in between of the walls of a bucket um, and act as a, a center of a spool um, for that line. Okay, if you're using a screwdriver, you need to have something on this side to kind of help wedge against the spool to keep it from wobbling around. Uh, this guy, it works just well as a keeper right there. So I only need a bit of a pool noodle just like so to hold that in place and that's going to help keep it from despooling on me and another little trick is to put this into water um, i'm not going to do this with the spider wire but for the monofilament it has a really strong memory and it will drive you bananas um, despooling so by putting it in the water it gives just enough kind of pressure and resistance to help keep that from coming off and, and going crazy, okay? Some people will tell you you need to come from over top or underneath to help prevent um, the despooling issues that happen with monofilament. And really what your issue is, is getting the memory out of the line. And so as we're doing this, if we keep good tension on it and we're kind of stretching that line, we'll stretch that memory out. Okay, so from here, we run that monofilament line up and we've got our reel on the rod. And so we come up through the first eye and we're gonna go around the, uh, the spool, okay? And this has a little keeper kind of knurled ring around it. So I could just do straight up braided on top of it. If you have a reel that doesn't have that and it's slick um, and you want to put braid on there, you need to start, you have to start with monofilament because other words, if it's slick, the braid will slip around. This is a pretty nice reel, so it comes with it. Um, so I'm kind of defeating the purpose of that feature, but hey, whatever. I'm getting a little bit more bang for my buck here without having to buy a whole nother um, thing of spider wire. So. What we do is the running end of a line is always the, the end there. You can also call it the working end. Behind that, you've got the body, and everything behind that is uh, basically the standing end. It's just sitting there doing nothing. Okay. If we take the line and we bend it, that's called a bite. All right. That's an overhand loop because the line is going over itself. If it goes under itself, 
That's an underhand loop, okay? Just that little bit of terminology we're gonna stick to when we do this. I'm a survival guy, so everything has to be really technical when it comes to knots. But uh, this knot that we're doing is called an arbor knot, and it's really simple. So we make a bite, we go around the spool, and we take the body, and we take the working end, and we meet them up. Make sure y'all can see this. Okay, we meet them up together, and make a bite with the running end around the body and we're going to make a loose knot just a loose overhand knot around the body of the line like so and we can cinch it down a little bit just to hold its place and so we make a loop like that but then in the end of the the line and the the running end here we're going to just do another uh, overhand knot. And this is, act, is going to act like a stopper knot. So we'll take the slack out by pulling on the body of the line. And so that first knot gets down there and holds it tight. But we work that second knot down and that locks in the first one and um, acts as a stopper, okay? So we're basically all set there. That's going to hold in place. You can really wrench down on this. In survival training, we would do this and make shelters and buildings. I mean, you can make anything. But we called it a Canadian jam. Um, but here it's going to be in fishing. It's called an arbor knot. All right. So uh, one of the things is make sure before you did that arbor knot, you flipped your gate up. Okay. Now that that is in place, we can flip the gate down run that monofilament line through there. And now we want to maintain uh, tightness on the line and that's going to help us keep um, or work that memory out. So make sure your drag, you tighten that down so that it can handle that resistance. Um, these lose reels have a uh, anti-reverse mechanism and so you hit that switch and that's really handy for doing this so you can kind of maintain that um, again that tension so uh, we're holding it out here just like like you see there and it's coming off of our reel we can actually turn that so it's a little bit more in line and let's see if this works for us okay so just nice and easy and we're not putting a whole lot of mono on there. Oh, son of a gun. It's when I jerked it around, it came off of the spool. Okay. So we'll just get that back onto the spool. There we go. No problem. All right. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast with this stuff. If you start freaking out when... Things kind of uh, get a little loose, and that's not going to be good. So just kind of keep that tension on there, go troubleshoot it, and then you're back to business, okay? And so I'll, ah, son of a gun. Okay, so it may get away from you once or twice, but that's all right. Just take your time, go fix it, and then just nice and easy feed that line off of there onto your spool. I've got almost a little bit too much tension against that spool in the water, so it's making it a little bit difficult to turn, but... That's okay. We're getting it. It's nice and steady. Okay. And again, I'm not filling up my whole spool with mono. I'm just getting maybe 10, 20 feet or something on there. And just acting as a backer, as some filler. So we'll call that good. Oh, let's do a little bit more. All right. We'll call that good right there.
Okay, so maintain tension on this. Grab your line, bring it down, and find that line keeper on the spool. There she is. Okay. If you do this and you lock it in place, man, it's worth just it's the weight in gold, which is probably not a good saying because this is actually a really light setup, but it's definitely worth it. Boop. And now that's all good for sanity's sake. Okay, next what we're gonna do is take that off of there and put our spider wire on or your braided wire, whatever it is you got. And we're gonna do the same thing, but this doesn't have nearly the memory of, of that mono, so I'm not gonna stick it down in the water because it just is one less thing to have to screw around with. Okay, this stuff's pretty easy to work with. Um, what we need to do next is find the working end of our mono, and we're gonna connect this to the working end of our braid with a cool knot called a uni to uni knot. If you've ever done a stopper knot, um, it's basically like that, but y'all are probably like, we don't know what that is, dude. So we take our mono and we take our braid and we match them up just like so. My hands are wet, so it's not the most graceful. But um, with the end of the mono, we'll do that one first. We make an overhand loop. Let's make it big so we have lots to work with here and it's not a pain in the butt. And we're gonna match that up with the body of the, um, of the braid. And make sure that you leave enough body and working end to do this exact same thing over here or else um, it's gonna be a real pain in the butt. So we have our overhand loop matched up to the body of the, um, the braid. And we take that working end of the mono and basically just wrap around both the mono and the, um, the braid here about five to seven times. So the more material that you have in this knot, the more resistance it's gonna have to pulling out. But with that said, you don't want a whole bunch because you're gonna have a big old Mongo knot. Man, I should have dried my hands off better. All right. Let's see. Do one more. Okay. And so now what we do is we take the running end of the monofilament and the body of the braid, and then we take the opposite side and we cinch it down. And it makes that right there, which is a little stopper knot. Kind of like we did on that um, arbor knot, you'll see here in a second, okay? So now we come down to the other end. We got plenty of material to work with. And we do an overhand loop with the braided. And same thing. We just match it up to the body of the mono. Come on, sucker. All right. And then we're gonna take it and again, go around five to seven times. And that was a lot easier than working with the mono on the other end, okay? So now again, you've got the working end and the body and pinched in one hand and the body of the mono pinched in the other and there you go, just tighten it down, okay? Now these are really far away but zippity doodah, they're going to meet in the middle. And since they're both stopper knots, they're going to stop each other, and that's what's going to keep it connected. Okay, so next, take your scissors, way over here, and trim that sucker down. Whoop. Oh, come on. And you can get that pretty far down there. Just make sure you don't actually trim your knot because you'll have to do it again. I don't know if y'all can hear the guineas freaking out, but that's fun. It's spring, 
so they're just going crazy they've been beating up our rooster they've been beating up each other they're a mess all right cool so we've connected our two different lines together with our uni to uni knot and we are ready to jam okay so come back over to your little spooling station and put pressure or put uh, tension on the line and here we go okay and then just watch that spool of spider wire because it's going to go a little faster since it doesn't have that pressure up against it because it's a smaller spool than the uh the mono so that pool noodle you'd have to make a different size one i guess if you have different size spools but we just keep that that tension on it out in front keep it in line and we're just going to feed it all the live long day okay on uh this lose tlc 2000 it's got a little knurled ring that tells you when you've gotten to uh when you need to stop putting line on there others they say really it's about a eighth of an inch off of the side from here or sometimes too you can kind of see where that bevel is if it comes down um, and stops before that bevel then you're good to go okay but i'm really really happy oops <laughs> pay attention to what you're doing all right there we go but i'm really happy with how easy this has gone because i was kind of stressing it you know um we don't live somewhere well, I guess we do. I just don't like the store that does it. But um, it's a lot cooler to be able to do this yourself and understand the mechanics of it and learn a new skill to teach your kids or grandkids or whatever um, than it is to have to rely on somebody else to do this for you. Um, going back to being self-sustainable, that's what it's all about. Not only is fishing a lot of fun, but in a pinch, I could be out there catching our meals. You know, if we've eaten all of our chickens, eaten all of our guinea hens, eaten all of the ducks, eaten all their eggs, eaten all the veggies, I've always, I always can go to the lake and fish and we can provide food uh, for the family that way. And really, maybe it's not food, but it's recreation. And when, when you're working your butt off all the time, like this stuff, it's a lot of fun doing all the homesteading and everything. But whew, you still need some me time, man. You got to get out of the house, um, go get a change of scenery, bigger picture, uh, and just relax. Something that's not related to work. So anyway, I'm going to finish this off, but hopefully this kind of takes, uh, takes it down a little bit for you. And it's not going to be such a daunting task because if I can do this, um, uh, you know, a caveman can do it. But um, so hope you, whatever kind of fishing you're getting into this summer, have a good catch and have a good time out there, whether you catch something or not, man. Just get outside, have some fun and uh, get some fresh air. So looking forward to some nice weather this weekend for my birthday. I'm going to get out there and just catch the biggest bass I can find. So y'all be good. We'll see you next time. Cheers.